Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi uh, Salam sejahtera dan selamat hari raya uh, Mohon maaf Zahid dan Batinlah So kita sambung semula kita punya siri dalam protection system Masih lagi dalam bab and introduction So part 9 Understanding the electrical drawing So we will be going through a typical drawing from Siemens Uh, schematics which is a uh, 6.6 kV punya schematic uh, if you guys have any other schematics uh, please email me to cruxofe.gmail.com uh, uh, we can uh, review all the schematics on how to read them on the power and the control side lah, of the schematics uh, and how the protection works eh? ok So if you have any other drawings like Tamco or ABB or any other brands, uh, please do email me. So hopefully we can share uh, these drawings through videos in this channel. Lah. Okay. So this is part 9, understanding the electrical drawings. Uh, so we have uh, three parts today. Eh? Uh, part number one is uh, contact system. Then the second part is uh, basically the drawing itself. Number three is something additional lah. Uh, but this part three I will share you in a separate video because if I share it all in, in one video, I think it will be too long lah. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. So contact system. Kalau uh, tuan tuan tahu, uh, it's a contact lah. Huh? This is uh, just introduction. Huh? So really, you will find. Many types of contacts lah, tripping contact, closing contact. Uh, so this all these contact are used for tripping, closing, remote, and indication lah. So here we have uh, most of the common types lah, yang selalu kita jumpa. Self reset type lah, self reset type. The contacts remain in the operated condition while the controlling quantity is supplied. Uh, returning to the original condition when it is removed. Ni really, already really best lah. Selagi uh, operating con. Uh, The controlling quantity here is basically the supply to the coil lah. So selagi you punya coil ada supply, dia akan maintain lah. Yang mana normally close jadi open, yang mana normally open jadi close. So once your supply dah gone, dia akan return back to its normal state lah. Then we also have a hand electrical reset lah, latching type. So this contact remain in the operated condition after the controlling quantity is removed. Okay, so this one is a hand electrical reset type. So macam lock out relay semua tu lah. So dia dia akan uh, maintain lah it's a mechanical punya latch lah okay and then uh, finally the most common use not in electrical lah normally in the instrument side is the fail safe type fail safe ah ha? maknanya mati apa gagal selamat lah no selamat gagal fail safe lah pening ni kalau convert convert bahasa Melayu Inggeris ah ha? so fail safe lah instrument uh, people would be really familiar with this concept So release or contact status are always in energized position. So under healthy condition, it is always in energized condition. So kalau you pakai normally open, it will be in close when relay is energized. So when the source is out of the relay or the relay kaputs, uh, the relay reset to its state lah. Uh, then it become fail safe lah. So this relay must always be energized. Uh, so we rarely use this but Uh, certain uh, electrical system they use they use it eh? they use it uh, mostly for if it is uh, related to process or emergency shutdown system lah but normally if you are using this for chantry or uh, this one is energized to trip so it's not fail safe lah so i think the simplest the easiest fail safe that you can find the electrical system is those breakers with under voltage coil Uh, so as long as your under voltage coil doesn't have any supply uh, you, you cannot close your breaker so once you have your supply so you have uh, you can close your breaker lah but once your uv loses its supply due to under voltage or power voltage dips uh, then your breaker will open uh, will be tripped lah by the under voltage coil lah. so just a reminder So when reading any circuit drawing, you must always remember that the convention of the contact status is always in the energized position. Uh, bila you baca drawing tu, semua drawing ni dalam keadaan tak on lagi, tak ada power lagi. Uh, so kena jaga-jaga lah. Uh, especially yang fail safe, because fail safe will be a little bit confusing. Eh? 
Okay. So this is a Siemens drawing eh, for a 6.6 kV system. Okay. So normally uh, we today we only focus on the schematic lah. Eh. So schematics normally they will have two parts to the drawing lah. Eh. One is the power circuit, another one is the control circuit lah. Eh. So the power circuit will be the primary circuit lah. Eh. Dia ada ambil daripada bus bar. Then goes down through a, a VCU, goes down to the cable through a CT, uh, and go goes to a motor lah. So this one is for a motor. Lah. So let's get to know some of the components today lah. So we have here the search arrestor. Lah. So the tagging differs lah, from one OEM to another. So search arrestor. You have here your VCU, lah, your vacuum contactor unit consisting of your vacuum contactors plus your Fuse. Uh, if you can see here, the vacuum contactor is rated at 400 amps. Uh, so this is the model of the VCU lah, 3TL6, still in production lah, by Siemens. And uh, they also have a fuse blown indication, which means it must have taken, a, uh, it must be taking a limit switch status from the striker pin of the fuse uh, to indicate whether the fuse has blown or not. Okay. And then we have here also the voltage transformer. Uh, voltage transformer 6.6 kV 110. So previously it was being used, uh, the, the supply is being used for the control circuit supply of the 110 AC in this uh, schematic. Uh, but it has been upgraded. So this PT is no more there. Uh, it has been isolated. And the supply for 110 AC is coming directly from the UPS supply. Okay, AC UPS 110 AC. And we have bus bar VT source. This one is still maintained because uh, this one is being fed to the power meter as well as to the protection relay lah. Uh, since we have the power skirt, uh, the control skirt is using 110 AC, so we need uh, under voltage or over voltage protection to trip it. Uh, if not, it will never trip lah because the UPS supply is always there. Eh? So bus bar VT is mainly used for metering and also voltage protection under voltage or voltage lah. Okay. And here we have, uh, this is CT, eh? 1 S1, 1 S2. Uh, so this one is star point at the S2, eh? if you can see, star point at the S2. So they have shorting links on all, uh, ni, at the uh, red, yellow, blue, and also the neutral star point. Eh? Okay. And also there's also a neutral link from the CT star point to Earth. So this shorting link is important if uh, for you to do uh, really calibration or secondary injection lah. Uh, so you can do it live, you can short the CTs, then you can inject uh, the relay or the power meter through these shorting links. Okay. Some people, uh, some manufacturer or some client, they request for test terminal blocks. So when you have these test terminal blocks, shorting links, shorting links uh, is not necessary lah. So they are kind of redundant. Eh? All right. What else? Uh? So we have here, so from the CT, it goes to the first relay, uh, which is a 7SJ621. This is the CProtec 4 series relay. Uh, and then it goes to CT. The old protection uses a CT upon CT, but now no, it's not being used anymore. It has been uh, shorted. And also to the power meter. Uh. So power meter, it takes uh, CT as well as voltage source. Uh. And also there has, is one CT going to the external emitter. Lah. So these are the components. Lah. And also the protection CT. Lah. 10P20, 10VA, lah. 75 amps. 75 slash 5 amps. Uh, so this is the continuation from previous slide. Uh, so the way you want to read it is quite simple. Lah. If you see this slash 1.2 means go to page 1 column 2. Uh, so like this one means slash 1.2. We, now we are on page 2. Where's the page? Uh, sorry, sheet 2. So this is sheet 1. So we look for sheet 1, column 2. So this is the continuation coming here. Alright, so that's way, that's the way it's being read lah for Siemens drawing. Eh? Okay, then from that uh, city it goes uh, to to another to the cable side and the cable side uh, is uh, there's another core balance city here eh? or Z zero sequence 
current, eh, zero current sequence lah, zero sequence current city, eh, which is basically for your effort lah, or your sensitive effort lah. So in this case, it's using a 50 slash 1, 10 pit 20, eh, 2.5 VA, core balance city. Alright, uh, so it goes to a sensitive effort input lah. And from the CT just now here, CT 11 to CT 13, it comes into this CT input. So F21 here is our main protection relay lah, 7SJ62. Eh. So in here, 7SJ62 is considered as a microprocessor based uh, relay. It is a very intelligent relay, it has CT input as well as a VT input. Also binary input lah. So binary input, you can program for start stop, for circuit healthy check, whatever that you want to program lah. It has up to 8 binary input and also up to 8 binary output lah from R1 to R8. Uh, this is the 7SJ621 series lah. It also has a live status contact which is basically uh, the watchdog uh, of your relay lah. Dia macam, uh, uh, this is a fail safe contact lah. So, <laughs> Whether if your relay if your relay is not energized, this contact will de-energize. If your relay is having internal fault, uh, this contact will de-energize. So, uh, th this is a like so something like a watchdog lah to say that your relay is healthy and working. Okay. Then power supply system interface, uh, time synchro. If you use, you can connect this to the common GPS clock operator interface. Uh, but this one we. It is using the system interface, which is the Profibus connection link lah, to SB5. Uh, this is the tagging, lah, D321, D325. So in this case, they are using Profibus connected to the S7 PLC. So here the load is going to a motor. And here we have a bunch of uh, uh, protection relay, which is if you can see it's PT100, so it's a temp temperature relay. So three of them is being used for winding protection, while the last two is being used for the driving end and the nine driving end bearing temperature. So this is winding temperature, F25 to 27. And this is the main protection relay. And of course, core density. Eh? All right. Uh, so here we go to the uh, vacuum contactor unit. So if you, the typical convention under ANSI is for the breakers or contactors, they use the number 52. Lah. So that's, if you see any drawings, 52, uh, 52, it will refer to a circuit breaker or a, a type of a contactor. Lah. Okay. So in this case, uh, 52-1, this is the vacuum contactor unit. So this is the boundary of it. So there is a, a one contact K51, which once closed, will energize the main contactor. So the main contactor here is taking power at 110 AC. And if you can see here, there is a small rectifier here, G1. So this G1 uh, is will, uh, will be supplying to the main contactor, lah, K1M. Eh. So our main contactor is actually using 110 DC. Eh? Uh, so, but the input here is 110 AC lah, being rectified and supplied to K1M. Okay, so this is a vacuum contactor unit. So this is just a normal, like a normal contactor. Once this contact K51 closes, this, this system will be energized. So how does it close the contactor? Once you energize the contactor, the, the, the K51 is closed. So K1M will be energized through this context, K1E and K1E lah, these two contexts, K1E. Okay, so as long as uh, K1M is not energized yet, this contact will remain closed. So once it's energized, K1M, so the contact 7172 will become open and de-energize K1E lah. So after, after that, the supply to K1M will be fed through this Relay R, which we call it as the economy resistor. Uh, so this is something like a lim it's a limiting resistor, uh, limiting the current. You can energize directly through K1E, but after some time your your coil K1M will be burned. Uh, so this one is just during the energization only, the initial energization 
energization of that contactor will go through K1E. Ha, lepas tu dia akan go through economy resistor lah. Nak limitkan current lah. So most DC contactors uh, like this lah. They will go that two short circuit first. Uh, they short first then they go through a resistor to limit the current. Kalau tak, you punya coil lama-lama akan terbakar lah. So this is also another failure point lah. So normally you punya resistor dah lama kan, 20 tahun, 15 tahun, hangus dan terbakar. You on je trip, on je trip, on je open kan. So you can check dekat you punya economy resistor. Sini kita ada banyak lah, VCU status. Ha, VCU status ni macam, VCU status lah, nak tahu dia open ataupun close. So whichever yang normally open, follows the breaker status lah. Which one is normally close, they follow the opposite of the breaker status. For example, kalau VCU ni tengah, sekarang ni tengah open. So contact ni memang open lah. So bila VCU contact open, normally open jadi close. Ha, yang mana close jadi open lah. Okay, so this contact is being used all over the circle lah. Ada untuk status ni, untuk status tu, untuk intertrip. Ha, banyak lah. Ha, sini juga ada racking in and out limit switch. Ha, depending, this is yang VCU model ni lah. Uh, so dia nak tahu status ni breaker ni dalam keadaan rack in, in ataupun rack out so once rack in all the status S31 will become the opposite lah so mana normally open jadi close mana close jadi open so this one uh, in this case it is the condition of the status when it is in rack out position lah ok uh, that's all then uh, Uh, ni we have here H41, 42, 43. This is the lamp. So you have strip on off lamp. And relay power supply. So all your relay is powered up from here. Your F21, the 7SJ621. Your temperature relay. And F14 is your power meter. All powered up from here. And here there is a special contact here. Uh, Special contact here, this is a contact from your upstream, under voltage. So under voltage upstream which will actually open and close your contactor in your in the load side lah. Alright. Hmm. So here, here is the remote and the local start stop circuit. Uh, but before that, we go to the circuit healthy check. So this circuit is designed uh, with a circuit healthy check. Eh? So to make sure that all your relay is in healthy condition, all the interlocking switches are in working condition. So you can see here, starts from here, it goes through the interlocking switch. Uh, so there, in, on the breaker, there is a mechanical interlocking switch. If it's not on, this contact will, will, will maintain open. Eh? So once you close the interlocking switch, uh, this contact will close. So FB is for fuse blown. Uh, if there is no fuse blown, this one will remain closed. Then it goes to the stator temperature and returns back here. Lah. Stator and bearing. So if there is no stator or bearing temperature being triggered, all that contact will remain closed. Okay, we, let's see. Lah. So if here, it asks us to go to page 6. Eh. So, so in this case, page 6, uh, this is the one. So it monitors all the bearing temperature and also stator temperature and it returns back here. Okay, so as long as there's no tripping, all this contact will remain close. Uh, remain close. So, so far it's close up to here. Eh? So general fault F21. Eh? So this is the, uh, if there's any fault at the relay, so general fault means tripping. Eh? Uh, if there's no tripping or anything, this contact will remain closed. Uh, this is a, a type of a fail-safe contact. Uh, okay. And then second part here is also another fail-safe contact, the life status contact, which is the watchdog of the relay. Uh, number, then this one is under voltage. If there's no under voltage, this contact will remain closed. If there's an under voltage at the upstream, this contact will become open. And uh, right in, make sure that the relay is in right in position. Then only this contact can close. Eh? And all this circuit healthy check will go to 2.3. Uh, which is sheet 2. Eh? Part 3. So here is the circuit. Here's the ni lah, circuit healthy check. 5.3. So the relay, the intelligent relay is actually monitoring the circuit healthy. So it 
under this one line, it's monitoring the interlocking, the fuse blown status, the stator and bearing temperature status, and also the relay status. Uh, so once all this uh, condition is in closed position or in the true position, so this one will be give it back to the relay to tell that the circuit is healthy, lah. the circuit healthy and it's ready for energization. Lah. Okay, next part here is our local and remote local remote start stop so we have here the menu and auto condition so we have your lo our local start here uh, if you select manual the local start push button is at side or the remote control unit uh, then stop button is a common for both also at local and also DCS off lah. distributed control system eh. maybe coming from Yokogawa or Foxborough or Honeywell eh. So this one, this is off and this is on. Uh, this is off normally comes from the your ESD lah and your DCS is stop lah. Okay, this is if you select auto, it will go through your DCS is on. So your DCS is on can be triggered by a, a, a temp temperature switch or level switch to switch on the motor lah. Okay, and then it will latch through this contact lah, 52 dash one and 52 dash. Same also for the start. Uh, this is these two contacts are basically like like pulse only, eh? only a pulse, the start and the DCS on. Eh? Once you give that pulse, it will latch through this contact on this left left and right side. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is the bearing and setter over temperature trip. So if you can see here, this is the winding. It's uh, paralleling three contacts winding for the red phase, yellow phase and blue phase so any of the winding trip it will trigger this relay and will, tri will trip the breaker lah. okay uh, on the right side here this contacts same contacts are also being sent to another monitoring system here it's called uh, the electrical integrated control system lah. okay all right and this we are here on the last page which is the binary output and uh, binary output of the relay so this is binary output, binary output, binary output R5, R6, R7 and R8, sorry R8 eh? so we have here binary output R8 is being assigned for this con uh, trip status, status over temperature, fuse blown and cable a switch eh? where else the another binary output is being assigned to the overload and also the high set uh, over current and uh, near earth fault uh, sorry uh, over, over current and earth fault eh? and this one is the output contact to switch on and switch off the relay K51 eh? if you remember K51 is the, on, the, con, the only contact to energize the main contactor and here there is a state a test uh, a test uh, apa? a test circuit where you can test the switching on and off of the breaker uh, but in rack out position lah. means once you rack out uh, it will allow for this test push so button so if you think this material your, is good please uh, share this material on to and your, your uh, friends uh, vacuum contact uh, and do subscribe to my youtube channel Clark Sophie e, and then my facebook page please uh, like my facebook page facebook.com slash Clark Sophie e. And if you have any other questions, please throw, uh, throw them in the comments below or you can email me directly lah at cruxofee at gmail.com. Thank you. Huh?